So moving on, another view to the future of vehicle HMI systems. I'm warmly welcoming the CEO of Panasonic ITS, Takayuki Tanabe. Panasonic ITS. So good day, everybody. So my name is Takayuki Tanabe. I'm from Panasonic ITS. So today, I will give you some insight on the future of vehicle HMI systems. But before we get to that, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So uh, last year, I was at CES, Las Vegas Showcase, to exhibit our multi-display systems using Qt. And uh, since 1997, I have been working in the areas indicated on the map and have developed uh, various systems. For the last seven years, I was in Frankfurt and had been working with famous German auto manufacturers. Now I'm in Japan. Now I'm in wonderful city, Yokohama. So in my private life, as these images show, I love sports, but especially karate. <laughs> so uh, let me introduce Panasonic ITS. The Panasonic is divided into four companies, which focus on different business areas. Among them, the AIS is the biggest company and focuses on the automotive business area. The Panasonic ITS is the only subsidiary of AIS in Japan and has been supporting overseas AIS subsidiaries all over the world. So we are professional software and hardware engineers. And by utilizing Panasonic technologies from all Panasonic groups, we have battery products and uh, various uh, electronics control units hereby referred to as ECU and in vehicle infotainment system. So first thing today, I'm going to talk about our collaboration with Qt. Then I'm going to talk about unified HMI platform. And to wrap things up, I will give you some insight on the future of vehicle HMI systems. Now let's talk about the Qt4 IVI. So our relationship with Qt dates back to 2013. From 2013 to 2016, we have been collaborating with Qt engineers in Germany and Norway, Finland, the US, and Japan. Our first target in 2013 was to establish Qt automotive solution for IVI. We came up with an IVI software development workflow with Qt like this. But I'm afraid I will not explain uh, too detail today, but we made this. And also, we've uh, designed a tool chain for IVI software development. So finally, the integrated state chart editor is now available in Qt 5.8, but you can use it. So oh, next, I will talk about Qt 4 e cockpit. Since this year, uh, we have been working on the uh, e cockpit system with Qt. So previously, we were working on uh, space in the yellow circle. Now we are working on the new space in the red circle, so-called e-cockpit areas. So in e-cockpit system, all information related to driving has to be given to the driver quickly and intuitively. So in order to create this kind of e-cockpit system, the enhanced Qt 5.9 would be a suitable candidate. 
by using Qt-Lite, the memory consumption is greatly reduced. The all functional safety standards have been achieved. And 3D graphics are readily available due to Qt3D Studio. So now we are doing technical evaluation of Qt for a 3D meter and for an augmented reality windshield head-up display. So now I will show you our unified HMI platform. Our e-cockpit system consists of electrical mirrors, a display meter, and center display, and air hat, and more. The display meters indicate navigation information, and blind spot information, and driver status, and more. And head-up display also indicated POI information, point of interest information, and danger detection information. So uh, this information might come to the driver simultaneously. It is important uh, to keep in mind, too much information uh, on the multiple display could be a distraction to the driver. So a common HMI architecture for multi-display is here. Each ECU has its own OS and own HMI layer, and own frame memory, and own display. Then the information from each ECU is indicated in each display without having any collaboration with each other. But we need more integrated system for safety. So please imagine this scenario. Now the driver is focusing on the center display. The system detected the two pedestrians. Then a warning appears on the center display. Then on the display meter, a yellow line appears pointing to the pedestrians to alert the drivers of them. Then uh, an additional uh, yellow line appears uh, pointing to pedestrians on the head of display. By a series of indication methods, we can direct the driver's eyes from the center display to an uh, area of interest. But in this case, pedestrians. Our unified HMI architecture for multi display allows us to create the system that has unified HMI and unified virtual frame memory and unified HMI manager beyond ECU. By using this, we can create a more integrated system. So let's move on to the final topic, future. Autonomous driving has been progressing steadily. And actually, this year, a famous German automotive manufacturer launched the autonomous driving level three car in the market. And in level three, the system monitored the driving environment instead of the driver. But if the system reaches the limitation of its capability, the system will return the control to the driver. However, when this situation happens, if the driver is sleeping or doing something else, an accident could happen. Therefore, the driver monitoring system will be essential to autonomous driving. If the system can monitor the driving environment, or if the system can monitor the driver itself, the system will bring the car to a stop along the side of the road if such a situation happens. So uh, let me here address a social problem in Japan. It's an aging society. I'm sure this will affect other countries like Germany too. According to a survey from the Japanese National Police Agency, there are 16.7 million drivers over age 65 in Japan. And uh, one third of fatal car accidents are caused by such drivers. 
you may have seen firsthand that elderly drivers have a tendency to confuse traffic situation. For example, elderly drivers sometimes look at the long traffic signals, mixing up which traffic signal goes with which intersection. Yeah, because in Japan, there is not so much distance between traffic signals, or intersections are close to each other. Then Panasonic IDS try to create this kind of car accident prevention HMI for elderly drivers. Actually, Panasonic manages high-quality retirement homes all over Japan. We are very familiar with elderly people. So uh, after realizing autonomous driving level 4 and 5, the car cabin would be a moving living space or be like a, a first-class seat in an airplane. Each passenger had their own display, and any passenger can share their display on the windshield as part of display. If they want to play the ball game with their family, the displays can be connected to each other to make one big table. In this future era of automotive technology, the Panasonic will be able to make the most of our experience and our technology from creating consumer products. Actually, we have been developing a business class cabin, a first class cabin, by using Qt. So oh, let me show the mobility lifestyle 20XX. So I hope you enjoyed the video. As you may have noticed that, in the level four and level five era, the consumers might select their car not by its outside appearance, but by its car cabin services. So uh, the, some people living in urban areas say that the cars are the assets that are not used every day. In other words, idling assets. So uh, then car sharing service will gain more popularity over time. The car selection might be similar to an um, airline selection. Actually, we select our flight not by the airplane manufacturer, like Boeing or Airbus, but by the service provider, 
like Lufthansa or Emirates. So in level four and level five error, the car will come to your home to pick you up. So uh, your customized car cabin environment will be downloaded from the cloud. So uh, then, I guess, the, uh, in such an era, the service provider will be play a major role. The essential key is HMI, human machine interface. So thank you for joining me today, and please enjoy the rest of the show.